Okay, short little video here uh, using the calculator. Um, so we're on confidence intervals. And um, let's say that you were given an example that looked like this. Find a 93% confidence interval for the true mean length of a German short hair pointer's tail if we have the following data in inches. 6.2 inches, 5.7 inches, 3.6 inches, 5.5 inches, and 12.9 inches. So these are actually the lengths of my <clears throat> five German short hair pointers. So this is an actual example. I did not make this up. I actually went out and did some calculations. So anyway, but this is this is what we're get, given. So as before, it is asking us to find a confidence interval, which is really nice, tells us what to do. But in this case, it has not given us the mean and the standard deviation. It has strictly given us the data values. And because of that, it means there's some work to do. We would either have to find the mean and the standard deviation, and most of us would choose to do that on our calculator. But if you're gonna do that on your calculator, why don't you just let your calculator do the whole darn problem? Sound good? So let me show you how you use your calculator to do a full confidence interval. So let's bring the calculator there, make sure we've got good visual. Pull that down a little bit. Okay. Okay, so on your calculator, turn your calculator on, on, clear it out. We are gonna go to the stat key. So we're gonna click the stat key. And the first thing that we're gonna do is edit. So if you remember way back when we, when we did this with standard deviation, you have to input your data. So I already have a whole bunch in L1, so I'm gonna go above L1 and hit clear and enter. And now it's cleaned out. So in L1 there, I'm gonna put 6.2, enter, 5.7, enter, 3.6. 5.5 and 12.9. And after remember you hit that 12.9, you need to get out of here. And the way you're gonna do that is by going second quit. So we get back to the main menu. Okay, so hopefully that is clear with everybody. So again, stat, edit, put in your data values, and then second quit. Now we decided that we want to do a confidence interval here. So the way that we're going to do that is go back to stat, but this time we're gonna go over to test. Now here we've got a whole bunch of tests and this is the first time we've seen a lot of these. So we've got a Z test, a T test, a two sample Z, a two sample T. There's a whole bunch of them. But what we're looking for is a confidence interval. So we wanna go a little bit down here. And as we hit the bottom of this list, I start seeing intervals. So one of them says a Z interval and the other one says a T interval. Now in this example, we need to decide, are we doing a Z or a T? And remember that that depends on the sample size. So because I only have the five dogs that I have data value from, data values from, is that gonna be Z or T? So we are definitely gonna use T on this one. So it means that we wanna slide down to the point where we see the T interval. So there's the T interval, we'll hit enter. And then you're gonna notice it's gonna give you some options here. So one of the options is data or stats. Well, we plugged in the data so we can slide down from there. It was in list one. It asks you the frequency, don't worry about that, just go through that, that should be just one. And then it says the C level. Now our C level is our 93% confidence. So remember, not 93, but 0.93. Don't, nope, I put in 92, 0.93. Okay, so we've got our data in there, L1, 0.93. Calculate. Boop, diddy boo. So you end up getting the these two numbers in parentheses there now i am going to move that to the side over there you can still see it so that i can write this down so it says 2.8695 to 10.691 okay it also gives you the mean and the standard deviation and your sample size 
um, in case you need it. But right now, we're just interested in the interval. This is the low boundary, and this is the high boundary. So we've got the low and the high. So we, we have the two endpoints, but just like always, oh, wait a minute, you can't even see that I've written that down. Okay, hold on, moving over. Okay, so the low and the high, okay, low and the high, there's our, there's the numbers, and I just took those right from my calculator. Okay. We definitely need our sentence, but we don't have to do really any math, okay? But we need a sentence, so we can say we are 93% confident the true mean tail length for German short hair pointers or GSPs is between 2.8695 and 10.691 inches. Okay, so German short hair pointers should have a tail length between 2.8695 and 10.691 inches. And we have that with 93% confidence. And again, we let the calculator do all of those calculations for us. Now, there is one problem with this. When the calculator does all the calculations for us, it does not give us the margin of error. Okay. So, if we need the margin of error, now remember the margin of error is that middle step that I always ask you to show. So here, there was no work to show because we did it in the calculator. So because we did it in the calculator, we got our answer, we write our sentence, we're done. But what if we wanted the margin of error? So this is how you find your margin of error if you have your interval. We're gonna do a subtraction. So we subtract our endpoints, subtract endpoints. And then we're going to divide it in half and divide by 2. So by subtracting, we're going to find the distance between them, 10.691 minus 2.8695. Okay. All right. I'll do that in my calculator. 10.691. 691 minus 2.8695, okay? And we get a length, so this is equal to 7.8215, okay? But remember, this is the length of the entire interval. That's the length of the entire interval, and the margin of error is the plus or minus. So this being the plus or minus means that it, they're, both of them are included in there. So if we want just one side or the other, the margin of error, we need to divide this by two. So we just divide by two and we get, so our margin of error, our E is equal to 3.91075. Okay, so now we have our interval we have our sentence, and we also have our margin of error. So we have all of the things that we did when we were doing this by hand, we have them, and the calculator did most of the work for us. It was truly just the margin of error that we had to do a little bit of work to find ourselves. Okay, so remember you can go back and watch this again um, to see where you go to plug things in, but in general it's stat over to tests, and then you go down to the ones that say interval, and remember, you need to decide whether it's gonna be a Z or a T, okay? If there were more than 30 here, it would be a Z. Since there were only five, we did a T, okay? All right, sound good? You are ready to use your calculator. Have a good day.